Hi guys, today we are doing a Silicon Valley review of season two, just ended, um, and we're using these shitty cameras while we're using all of our wonderful cameras to work on Epic History X-Men volume two. It is forthcoming, uh, hopefully out in July. And uh, right now, Volume 1, Epic History X-Men Volume 1, is for free on YouTube, so go check that out if you haven't already. Uh, it's our best thing that we've done to date. It's got awesome animation and a lot of hard work and time went into it, so definitely go check it out and get ready for at Part 2 on Vimeo On Demand. Uh, look forward to that. So, Silicon Valley is now my new favorite show on HBO. Uh, Game of Thrones is this season. Totally lost the crown. <laughs> uh, Silicon Valley is it. I love this show. Uh, this show is like the closest approximation to my own life, I feel like. Like, I have a small business that I run out of my home, you know, and even though we're not like coding, we do have friggin' computers everywhere and we have like crazy, like a crazy studio upstairs and all this stuff. So, a lot of the trials and tribulations that these characters go through are, you know, I echo in my life in different ways. Obviously, there's, you know, a lot of differences, but it's like I can totally relate to these guys on so many levels in so many ways. Uh, the show just makes me laugh so hard, like every time. Uh, this season in particular, overall, I feel like it was really frustrating. Um, I have never been so angry at a television show in my life. I was biting my cat head pillow and then throwing it across the room because just Richard is just such an idiot and he's always doing stupid stuff and like being, you know, I guess, I guess I'm a CEO of my company or some shit. So it's just like seeing this guy fuck up, you know, it's just like, don't just stop doing that, you know, because it's like, oh man, I've had total screw ups too. And I, I, I know what he's doing wrong and like, oh, it's like I've been there and in a lot of ways. It's, I don't know. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. Um, but yeah, it's very frustrating. It's kind of hard to watch him get kicked, you know, so hard every friggin' episode. It's like they take one step forward and like five steps backwards. You know, every time they have a win, there's just like something terrible that happens. And I'm hoping that next season is a little more stable uh, than this season. This season, like almost, it kind of gave me a heart attack. Like this show is kind of giving me a heart attack, especially the ending. Um, where he tell, he texts them to uh, to delete the the program and then you know he's got to get back and then he kicks his keys under the thing and then the guy won't do his cell phone and the email goes into the spam I was like oh my god I was having a heart attack so let's just let's kind of I guess let's start with Richard then let's start with Richard so at the very end we find out that Richard uh, has been voted out of CEO of Pied Piper he's been voted out of his own company which is something that I always have heard about but I've never understood how that happens, you know, because um, that's one thing. That's another thing that I love about the show is that it teaches me a lot of stuff about the business world. And uh, I'm really interested to see what happens next season with Richard and how he's going to deal with this and what part of Pied Piper he's going to be now. Because even though he's not the CEO, can they boot him out altogether? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how this shit works. You know, I'm, I'm not quite to that part yet. So uh, it's interesting to see what's going to happen there. Although part of me is kind of like, Richard, didn't, like, you're a terrible CEO. <laughs> like, Richard's, like, the worst. Like, he's just not built to do business, you know? And he's not good at it. And he continually fucks up because this is not what he should be doing, you know? And, you know, I feel, I feel so much for Richard because I feel the same way a lot of times where I'm just like, I should not be dealing with this business stuff. Like, I'm a creative person and I need to be working on, like, making creative things, not dealing with business fuckery, you know, because that shit just stresses me out. Anyways, part of me is kind of, like, relieved to see that he's not the CEO of Pied Piper anymore. But then again, who is? Like, who now is the CEO? And we'll also see what happens with Monica because if I think Monica has a seat, like, she has a seat, Ehrlich has a seat, uh, What's-His-Face has a seat, uh, Richard, and then now uh, the VC, um, Raviga, they have, she has three seats or something like that. So, I mean, if all three of them come together, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Let's talk about some of the other characters besides Richard. Uh, the new character that came in this season, Russ Hanneman, he was hilarious. I love their douchebag investor. Uh, now that they had to get a, a new investor and all this stuff, uh, Russ Hanneman was awesome. Like, I love that he came in right before he went to Hooli and then, you know, and, it, and 
His fucking three comma bullshit was so good. I love the fact that they put that dog shit in his house because like every rich person who has a giant fucking mansion also has dog shit in their house. Like I don't get it. Like they all just have dog shit on their floors and they're just like, whatever, it's just dog shit on my floor. And it's like, you have shit in your house. That's disgusting. It's, it's like some weird rich person disease. I don't know why dog shitting, I don't know. I mean, I do know, but uh, you know, it's hilarious. I'm so glad that they put that in there. I love that his fucking three comma tequila and when he came in when they're when they're downloading all the intersight files and he's like i'm coming here to be cool you know and like and like how richard tells him to go fuck off and then how he like acts really cool afterwards but then he ends up fucking up anyways you know and like deleting a third of intersight's content i mean it was just like oh russ hanneman you dick and that and the jokes he kept making uh about the uh, the doors you know doors that go like this doors go like this you know at the very end when he's talking to monica you know and he's like you want to take a ride in my car and she's like no i don't think so and he's like do your doors do this do they do this i don't know i love it i love russ hanneman uh i hope to see him back again next season i mean i know that he's not a part of their thing anymore uh he's he sold his share of the company but i do totally want to see more of that weirdo fucking character you have gavin belson uh, you know, not only is Richard getting fired, Gavin Belson is probably also getting fired or something's going to happen to Gavin Belson. I really love this actor. Uh, I, the first thing I ever saw him in was American Psycho, uh, where he plays the, the dude that hits on Patrick Bateman later on. It's just like, I, I've kind of kept my eye on him since American Psycho and he's so good in this role. I love the shenanigans going on at Hooli. Corporate shenanigans are like the funniest fucking thing in the world, like especially since they've decided to promote Baghead. <laughs> so Baghead's getting promoted and in true corporate fuckery style, they get his fucking nickname wrong and they're like, come on up here, Baghead, Ugh, fucking X, Y, Z. And it's like so perfect. Like the Baghead thing cracks me up. I love seeing him as the team leader of xyz and all this stuff now he just keeps failing upwards you know and he's just a total idiot like it's it's pretty hilarious watching big head story uh continue on and gavin belson um and i thought it was really funny at the very very end where gavin belson's guru hears about big head and then goes to nelson and you know he's he's ditching his boy like he's ditching gavin you know because uh, the spiritual guru jokes are, are always really funny to me uh, let's see here monica uh, Monica, so I thought the, the fucking cigarette thing was hilarious, uh, where she was being persecuted. She had to hide her cigarettes. And then when Jin Yang, like, they, they sell their, Jin Yang's weird pedo app or whatever, but turning into a, pivoting into a smoker app, and then he's fucking smoking. Like, oh, that was so good. Ehrlich Bachman this season, he also did not have a lot of stuff to do. Um, necessarily, I felt like, you know, even he, I felt like his character felt like he didn't have anything to do. Like, he was just kind of like, oh, I'm here, you know, whatever. Uh, the, the, the Fahey yogurt jokes were really good. Uh, he had a lot of bong action this season. Uh, I did like at the very end where he's like, they're like, we need you to help us code, Ehrlich. And you've never seen him code before. Like, he only just hangs out around the house, like, smoking weed all the time. That's all you ever see him doing. So it's funny to see him finally be like, I don't code because of my carpal tunnel, you know? And then, and then when he finally decides to do it and he goes and he gets the little carpal tunnel gloves to put on, and you know that he really does have carpal tunnel. If you've got those fucking gloves, those, that little wrist brace in your house, like, you know you've got some real fucking problems with your hands. So yeah, that was really funny. And I loved seeing him finally get in there and fucking do it and tell those f people trying to buy his house to go fuck themselves. Like, oh, it was so great. Um, Jared, in particular, who kicked that whole thing off, uh, Jared in the very last episode was so great when he was like talking to Ehrlich about how he's like, you can't sell this place. Like, this place is magic. Like, what we're doing is magical. And Ehrlich's like, you gave up like a position at Hooli. You'd be senior VP right now. Like, you'd have all this stuff. Like, why are you here? You know, like, he just doesn't get it because he just thinks that ma the material world is like where it's at, you know? And how Jared has to explain to him why that, like, this is more magical and that he would give up a thousand Hooli job vice president's things to, to do something real with some real people, you know, that's actually like, I don't know. It's just, 
I thought the the his his whole talk with Ehrlich at the end was very inspiring. Um, I love that he wanted the condor egg, like he was all about the condor egg and how he and they're, and they're having the whole Schrodinger's cat thing, and then he calls and the guy falls, and then they get all the people watching it. That was brilliant. That was so well done. Um, and I also would with, with Jared, especially the best Jared jokes this season was when he was sleeping in Richard's room, uh, and he was like speaking in German, like you heard him like say something about Auschwitz. So it's like he has some weird, like was he a Nazi in his past life or something? Like what's going on? Because he is super bureaucratic and efficient. So it's like funny that he would have some weird Nazi tie. And then at the very end where they get all those boxes of stuff for the Huli uh, deposition coming up and he's trying to tell Dinesh and uh, Guilfoyle that, you know, work will set you free or, or whatever, which is on top of the uh, Auschwitz, like has like a, like when you're going into it, there's a gate you pass through that says work will set you free, which was supposed to motivate the Jewish people to just work really hard. And if they did that, then, you know, but you, obviously it's a lie and they were gassed. So that's what that joke means. And it's hilarious. I love it when Guilfoyle was just like, did you just say that work will set me free? Like, that was just so beautiful. Uh, moving on to Guilfoyle and Dinesh, you have to kind of talk about them both together. Um, hilarious as usual. They're my two favorites. I think they're everybody's favorites. Uh, Guilfoyle and Dinesh have the best chemistry. They're so funny together. Uh, Guilfoyle reached, like, ultimate levels of hotness for me this season. Uh, the whole satanic, like, builder of awesome... Uh, hardware situations is amazing to me. He's a fucking doer. He's a doer and I love it. I love people that fucking like know how to do some shit and they fucking do it and it's awesome. I'm into that. So I love seeing uh, Guilfoyle do that sort of awesomeness this season. I love that uh, when at the very end when they're they're trying to keep it going while the, all the views are coming in during the Condor guy being in the thing. Uh, he mentions that his um, what's it called? The server is called Anton. And Anton LeVay, who's like the founder of the Satanic. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. I love, I love all of his stuff. Uh, Dinesh was also great with his tender jokes and outed by Wi-Fi. Um, I love that Yo-Yo Dine was across the hall, which is from Buckaroo Banzai. It's a Buckaroo Banzai uh, reference, which I loved. Uh, the ferrets shit was hilarious. Um, what else? I'm trying to think of anything else. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, let's, let's not forget that the homicide energy drink stuff was really funny. Apparently HBO made an actual homicide energy drink website that you can go on. That's pretty, <laughs> pretty funny. Uh, the, the double A colostomy bag thing was pretty good. I love seeing Richard kind of grow some balls this season and tell some people off. So yeah, Silicon Valley, I'm so excited for next season. Uh, this is my favorite HBO show right now. Uh, although I am, I'm, I'm interested to see what happens with True Detective. I don't think it's going to be as good as the first season. I think it was a fluke, uh, but I'm going to try that when that comes out. We'll, we'll watch that and see how that goes. Um, so yeah, that's it today for my review of Silicon Valley. Uh, please don't forget to check out Epic History X-Men Volume 1 for free now on YouTube on my channel. And also be on the lookout for Volume 2 coming soon to Vimeo On Demand. And also don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Facebook for all your comic book only news and updates.